everyone, and welcome to the Political Job Interview, where I interview candidates running for election. I'm Vincenzo Calla, the host, and today I take on the role as the boss, giving a job interview to today's candidate, Laura Shant. Laura is running for election for Ottawa City Council as a candidate for Ward 12, Rito Vanier. Thank you, Laura, for your time, and thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Vincenzo. It's awesome to have you, and let's get started with this job interview. All right, let's do it. As with any good job interview, I'm going to start off with an opportunity to learn more about Laura. So the first question is, Laura, can you tell me a bit about yourself and your story? Sure. Um, so my name is Laura Schantz. I'm 40 years old. I was born in rural Eastern Ontario near Belleville, a place called Prince Edward County. And I grew up there, got, you know, spent my time with my community and enjoying myself in that area. And then when it came time to go to college or university, I decided to move to Ottawa and I've been here ever since. I've spent a lot of time studying criminology, sociology, and gender studies. I've spent a number of years working in a lot of different jobs. I've been a shelter worker. I've been an economist. I've been a university professor. And, you know, now I'm a city council candidate here in Rideau Vanier. So my next question is, why? Why have you decided to run for, for councillor in Rideau Vanier? You know, it wasn't the first thing on my mind. If you'd asked me two years ago what I would be doing in fall 2022, I wouldn't necessarily have told you that I would be a political candidate. But it, I really I really felt the call to to stand up because we're really at a moment in our city where there's a possibility of having some really big positive changes that could benefit all of us. Uh, there's really the hope of getting a city that we want and when i realized kind of the moment that we were having right now in you know last year and this year in terms of there have been a lot of challenges with city council the dysfunction and a lot of people really were hoping for better and i was one of those people and for me i got thinking that you know if i don't step up uh you know, I'm going to have no right to complain. I'm going to have, you know, just be stuck with whatever we get. So I decided, you know, it was time to put my money where my mouth is, so to speak, and to to give this a go. Well, you made a really good point that and and now really is a, a time for change. Um, there's going to be an entirely new council. There's going to be almost oh, almost half of council will be new faces. Um, there's going to be a new mayor. And now is the time, a really turning point in all politics, but especially municipal politics, where new ideas are coming forward. And I'm sure we're going to continue talking about that later on. We're going to take a bit of time now to talk about the job and what you bring to it. So the first question is, what experience do you bring to this job? You know, I'm someone I've been very involved in my community in the past and in involved in a lot of the the issues that are facing our community. So when we talk about Rideau Vanier, we're talking about a very urban neighborhood. Uh, we've got Vanier, Sandy Hill, Lower Town and the Byward Market are our communities here. And I've spent a lot of time living and working in this area. I've spent five years working in homeless shelters. I've spent, you know, I've spent many, many years, more years than I'd like to count uh, as a student at the University of Ottawa. And during that time, I, I made it all the way up and researched and did a PhD in criminology on the experiences of senior women who are facing homelessness. So I've got a lot of experience in the areas of housing and homelessness. I've been a transit advocate for years, fighting for better public transit and better transparency through this whole challenge we've had with the LRT and through the difficulties we've seen with our bus system too. And on top of that, I've just been, you know, very involved in the life of my community. I live in an area where I'm raising my kids here in Vanier. I'm, you know, working on initiatives with my neighbors. We we formed a small group and made it a group called Vanier Masks this past winter, where we did a little bit of online fundraising. We're able to distribute over 600 masks to low-income individuals in our neighborhood who wouldn't otherwise have had access to high-quality masks during some of the coronavirus waves. And, you know, being able to execute projects big and small, it gives me, you know, a wide range of skills to to put our to push our neighborhood forward and i've had the ability to meet people of all walks of life with all different interests and backgrounds and abilities and i really want to make sure that those community voices come forward at city hall and i'm someone who is ready and willing to do that 
Well, those are a lot of really important uh, issues and lots of experience that you've had working with those issues, um, especially transit is obviously the big elephant in the room right now with uh, city council. I'm pretty sure every candidate I've had on this show has talked about transit in one capacity or another and uh, homelessness as well. A big issue in, in your ward and in downtown and many parts of the city that uh, needs more attention for sure and definitely something that the next council needs to to work on. But I wanted to ask you now, um, what sets you apart from all the other candidates who are running in Rideau Vanier? You know, I think for me, it's a lot of it is my connection with the community and my past experiences having done a lot of this on the ground work because, you know, there's there's many other candidates. I have to say I'm, I'm one of 10. Uh, which is actually, this is the most contested ward in the city right now. So that's, uh, it's an interesting place to be. What sets me apart, though, is the fact that I am ready and willing to work with the community and to raise a lot of issues that just simply people aren't talking about. You know, I'm a big champion of paratransit, for example. A lot of people just assume that paratransit riders are okay and have their system and they don't think twice about it because the LRT takes all the attention, but I'm someone who is ready and willing to fight for para riders to have a seat at transit commission table to make sure that para riders have same day booking and to really address the systemic inequities that we find in those systems like paratransit. I'm an accessibility advocate. Um, I have two disabled parents. I've had, you know, I have an autistic son. I've got lots of my own challenges being an autistic person doing this. And so for me, it's really important to bring those diverse lived experiences to the table and to make sure that we have a candidate who's ready to be that voice and that support for people who feel that nobody has listened to them and that their views aren't heard and frankly aren't cared about. You know, in my work in civic engagement, a lot of the people that I speak with and work with have told me that, you know, they haven't bothered being involved in the past because they feel their voices don't count. And that's something I hear a lot and something that I know I have the skills and the drive to combat, that I can help make City Hall a place where everyone feels welcome and where everyone feels that their views are heard. And and a big part of that is um, obviously getting out to vote. Um, everybody watching this show, um, hopefully uh, most of you, I'm sure, are of voting age over 18. So make sure to get out and vote in this election because that's how, like Laura was saying, um, not being forgotten, having a voice, go out and support a candidate who who you find um, interesting and that you align yourself with. Um, Laura is giving a lot of ideas as well now too. So if you support Laura, make sure to just, the best thing you can do is go out and vote. And that's really important, super important for this election. Uh, you can have a big impact just by going out to vote. So part of serving as an elected official is serving the people who elect you. So a few questions now about how you wanna serve the people. What's something that the people you would like to serve, the people of Rideau Vanier need that you want to get done if you're elected? So some things I want to get done if I get elected, I've just talked a little bit about accessibility and paratransit, which, you know, it's really important to me that we get those accessibility improvements we need to make sure our city's one for everyone. I also want to talk a little bit about francophones in our community and francophone programming, because it's, it's something that's often overlooked. We know right now there's been a lot of discussion about how, you know, the number of first language French speakers is slipping in our communities. And we really need to make sure that we're offering people the ability to live their lives in French, um, to, to have their services delivered in French, and to also have recreational and cultural programming in the language of their choice. And so that's something we can really work on here in Brito Vanier. We know we have you know, a real challenge in terms of providing good, good, solid community programming at some of our community centers like Richelieu Vanier. And I'd really like to see that improved. You know, in terms of neighborhood amenities, I would also really love to see more focus on having engaged and vibrant neighborhoods. Uh, Byward Market in 2026 will be having its 200th anniversary. And we really need to make sure as this anniversary comes up that we're ensuring Byward's future. And in a way, we need to do that by looking to the past. We need to make sure that Byward is not just a tourist destination but it's also meeting the needs of local residents who want to be able to shop in Byward and have those 15 minute neighborhoods that we've been talking about a lot through the official plan. Because right now, Byward has lost the hardware store. Most of the fresh fruit and vegetable markers that you used to see around Byward Market Square are no longer there. And to be able to offer services to local residents, that means meeting your local needs as you walk around your neighborhood. And we really need to have a push to make sure that 
that is easy to do and it's engaging and that the environment is one too where you know we don't want to see so many cars in byward let's be honest we want to see a beautiful walkable neighborhood where there is spaces to sit outdoors and enjoy hopefully the, in the longer term the shade of some big beautiful trees in the shorter term maybe some shade sales or something to to offer that really inviting engaging environment that we need to make our neighborhood more vibrant and more inviting at all hours of the day, not just simply for the evening restaurant and bar crowd. Well, it's it's so true. And and like you said, looking to the past for the future, um, the idea of 15 minute communities, although it's uh, an idea that has gained popularity in years, um, is really something that has been around for the longest time. You know, the the local the local people in the old days where you would have your local grocer and your local shoemaker and uh, and uh, blacksmith and all those sorts of things all together in one little area where people would commute by foot to go to go do this. And, and Byward Market is the perfect opportunity for that in, in Ottawa. It's the heart of our downtown and uh, being able to take advantage of that and and uh, bringing people that live there, uh, not having to leave their neighborhood to to get those those services that they should get. And um, and yeah, creating a great place that uh there's lots of places like that in Europe and, and lots of places that we can learn from. And Byward's the perfect opportunity. But I wanted to go on to the last question okay, now, yeah. which yeah. is what's one accomplishment that you've achieved that demonstrates why you would be a good elected official if the people were to choose you? So one thing that I think a lot of people might not know about me is that when I speak French, I learned French as an adult. Uh, for those who are you know refined French speakers, you can hear when I speak French, I'm speaking with a bit of an accent. Um, and really, I learned French as an adult because it was absolutely important to me to be able to communicate and engage with my neighbors and my community. So I come from a very Anglophone community. And for me, coming to Ottawa, seeing the value of having a community where everyone can communicate in the language of their choice meant that for me, I had to be the one to adapt. I had to be the one to adjust and to learn a new language, not to expect other people to accommodate me. And it's really incredibly important that we give people that ability to be welcomed. And for me, it's been, you know, it's, to me, it demonstrates that I'm willing to do the work. I'm willing to, you know, take the time. Ça vaut la peine. It's, it's worth the effort to, to go the extra mile for my community. You know, if you want to talk about concrete things I've accomplished, uh, I've mentioned Vanier Mass. I've also mentioned my work with Ottawa Transit Riders and, Ottawa Transit Riders is one of many groups that were pushing really hard for that public inquiry into the LRT. And happily, you know, the, the provincial government eventually stepped in and we're, you know, Ottawa Transit Riders feels really proud, you know, and me as a member that we were able to be part of the push that made that happen. Part of the, you know, the groundswell calling for that public inquiry. And, you know, it wasn't just me, it wasn't just Ottawa Transit Riders, but to have even been one voice in the crowd that is going to let us have more transparency and have a clear plan for how to do things better in the future that we can implement. I'm very proud of having been part of that movement. Definitely. And and uh, it's just so important. There's so many great things that you mentioned uh, today. And and like you said, um, Rito Vanya is probably the most bilingual of all the wards in Ottawa. Um, the largest francophone community in Ottawa is is in Vanier. Like you said, um, there's lots to be done to continue that. And uh, like you said, making sure that you are available in both languages and uh, be accommodating to to all people so that not just for the matter of accommodation, but a matter of respect and just uh, being able to to communicate with all of your neighbors the same way. So thank you, Laura, so much for joining me today. It was great having you, and I'm sure the viewers have really enjoyed hearing what you have to offer to them. Election Day is October 24th, 2022. If you like hearing what Laura Shantz had to say and live in Ward 12, Rideau Vanier, you have the opportunity to vote for them on Election Day. Check with the local election officials for more details. Stay updated and make sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at VC Productions 25 Check out my website, VincenzoCala.com. Make sure to like, subscribe, and choose to get notifications here on YouTube. The Political Job Interview is a VCALA production. So until the next video, I'm Vincenzo Cala, signing out.